turns me on, man. Like this, it's, I've never seen this. A red carpet in LA and the skies open up with hail. Look, it's on the ground. It's hail. That doesn't happen. I mean, this is not supposed to happen in LA. I mean, why, why is this happened? was made at the MTV Movie and TV Awards last night. The Best Acting Award was presented as the first ever genderless acting award. The first acting award in history that doesn't separate nominees based on their sex says something about how we perceive the human experience. Making the moment even more poignant, the award was presented to Watson by Asia Kate Dillon, the first non-binary actor to play a non-binary character on TV. Best Kiss went to Moonlight stars Ashton Sanders and Gerald Jerome. This represents more than a kiss. This is for those who feel like the others, the misfits. By the way, last night wasn't all glitz and glamour. Many of the stars weathered a storm, literally, when the skies opened up and a freak hailstorm ensued during the red carpet arrivals. <laughs> Form. And you said at one point that a big dark force didn't want us to make this film. Sure. What was the force? What was the force? It's the thing you can't see. See, if you, I, I'm a believer, by the way. So if you believe, you believe that there are big realms of good and evil and they're slugging it out. What does the evil side want? Oh, it wants you. It wants you got into the adult business. Mm. But people, I'm sure, would love to blame the, the porn business on, you know, his problem. Both statements are probably true. It's a career path that tends to attract lost souls. And the lifestyle takes a toll on many of them. We are always a thing. We're always an inanimate object, a sexual object. Nothing we feel matters to anybody. And Utah becomes the first state in the nation to declare pornography a public health crisis. Lawmakers unanimously passes a resolution today declaring pornography a public health crisis hey ball if savant was to do anything to harm this precinct would i destroy him but this morning former nfl player turned actor terry cruz has the internet abuzz with a personal struggle for years 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 my dirty little secret was that i was addicted to pornography so their brain is more vulnerable, and yet they have all this unlimited access, and they're chronically consuming it, leading to problems. Um, and they have unlimited novelty. This isn't, you know, the 80s where you could flip through a magazine once, and then you can't get shocked anymore after that. It really, really messed up my life in a lot of ways. It was my secret. Nobody knew. And you could see a thousand naked girls in a minute. It's a novelty that's never been matched before in human history, so it overstimulates a teenager's brain or anyone's brain for that matter. It took a non-curable disease to finally wake me up. I got, have a few stats here. $100 billion spent on pornography every year. $100 billion by customers. The porn industry actually lures in an already damaged population. This is who they prey on. But it the only reason I'm mentioning it, it is a global crisis. It's a new crisis. I just remember I went, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I need, where's a Jack Daniels? Get me some meth. You know, I was, you know, this is a whole new territory. But like many porn actors, she soon struggled uh, with addiction. Now in her 40s, she's a born again Christian. Meaning, I mean, there's always been a little pornography in various forms, you know, over, over centuries, various ways that has been manifest, but in the last 10, 20 years, I mean, the last two, three years, but the last 20 or 30 years, it's escalating so rapidly, there's nothing like it in history. I think in the future, we'll look back on this time in humanity's history, this pivotal moment, and we're going to say, you know, how foolish they were for having children have unlimited access. 
How would you feel if your kids turned to you one day and said, Mommy, I want to become a porn star? I would have to look at myself and wonder where I messed up as a parent. So you're saying as good as this experience was for you and as happy as you are looking back on it, you would discourage your kids from it? I would discourage them from it. But I, I just don't think that it's the same business that it was oh so long ago. Well, thousands of people tie the knot every year, but now many people are saying I do to themselves. The days of Lot. And it will become the first state to allow residents to identify as something other than male or female. Self-marriage is growing, and the movement has gone global. Self-marriage, or sologamy, I guess, is growing in popularity. Gross. Yeah, weird. <laughs> it's something that's becoming more and more understood and more and more accepted. Well, it almost sounds narcissistic to me. It's like, I love myself so much, I'm going to marry myself. <laughs> it's weird, is bottom line. Yeah. Throughout his career as a parish priest, he remained celibate and kept his homosexuality a secret. But now, at the age of 78, the Reverend Philip Clement says he's finally found love with a Romanian male model who's 54 years his junior. We're pronounced husband and husband. Great pleasure to pronounce your name. Mr. Clements from East Street near Sandwich says it's time for the Church of England to change its policy on same-sex marriage. We will use what is be seems to be becoming an international standard of using an X, which doesn't just mean non-binary. It simply means somebody does not identify with either male or female. I love myself. I think I'm grand. I go to the movie just to hold my hand. I'm a nut. So they're nuts. <laughs> That's what you see when you walk up the aisle. Clearly. I'm a nut. Okay. The Bible makes it really clear in the last days, immorality is going to go to a whole nother level. Class may be finished for the day, but senior school student Anson Hui has a long night ahead doing his homework. Long hours in class and at home, regular mock exams, and little or no outdoor activities. Anson Hui, like many others, says it's that academic stress that's to blame for a number of student suicides. My schoolmate ended his life because of school stress. I was very sad when I found out what education system is this when students resort to suicide. Last month, five students took their lives. We also need more women. I'm real, you know, today I saw a thing in that said a lot of men. A 40-second video has been circulating on the web showing a guest at a main Democratic Party event allegedly mocking increasing suicide rates. White men were committing suicide. And I almost said, yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought about it. <laughs> the disturbing part is that there is a collection of people in this state that would would take humor or, or celebrate people taking their own lives, and those people were there at an official Democrat event. This world is such a, um, and when I say this world, I mean it. I don't mean in an ideal sense. I mean in uh, every day, every little thing you do. It's such a gimme, gimme, gimme. Everybody back off. You know, everybody's like, you taught that from school, everywhere, big business. You want to be successful? You want to be like Trump? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Push, 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 push. Step, step, step. Crush, crush, crush. Jenny is here with news of this uh, latest airplane brawl. It seems like we got one every day, right? This is just the latest in what seems like a daily string now of altercations and flat out fisticuffs. <laughs> Passengers, according to police, were so upset, they began to fight each other near the crowded Spirit Airlines check-in counter. The videos include this one, which shows the April 25th board meeting when the board passed a proposal to prevent bullying of Muslim students. One man leaves before being escorted out by police. My name is Christopher Weirich. I'm a resident of San Diego. I'm a taxpayer, a father, and a husband, and a very, very proud American. Over the years, I've had many titles. One of them I will not accept is infidel. There has been an argument over the years to keep religious beliefs out of school, especially any that happen to be associated with Judaism or Christianity. So at what point did you decide that it was okay to teach my children about Islam? 
is. So I've seen your reports, and it amazes me that you've allowed CARE to come into our public schools and begin to implement pro-Islam curriculum. What's next? Teaching them about the five pillars or the conversion prayer. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, dude, you. I'm going to go. You're going to have to drag me out of here. Yeah. Is that what you consider educating? your organization like care with ties to terrorists like Hamas have an ear of this board sir we've got to ask yeah, whatever to how does it okay. you actually are allowing them to implement its propaganda and hate speech into our schools in an effort to brainwash the minds of the young our kids are being taught today in school secular education and in college that they are the descendants of fish that we are just stardust being banging on the surface of the cosmos in a universe that's ungoverned, that does not care. All that is above us is sky. No justice ahead of us. What part of this had the greatest effect on you? Is, is that possible to isolate a moment or a time or not? Oh, boy. I'll, I'll be honest with you. There are things that I went through I can't even talk about. I'm sure. lightning uh, and uh, having your shoulder separated uh, and uh, experiencing lashes in the hyperthermia and for five weeks on that cross. and we're gone, we're absolutely gone when we die. That's what the world is telling our children today, that the universe is just time and chance acting on matter. No governing anything, no personal order. Well, two pro-life teenagers just had a pretty amazing encounter with the forces of tolerance. We're actually just exposing the Holocaust that's happening in America. There's no Holocaust happening in America. There actually is. Talk about a Holocaust happening in America. Go into an inner city and talk to the poor and other cripples. These are image bearers of God. You go to hell where they are too. Don't talk sir. to my students. Do you not understand when I say? Do not, do not mind, sir. talk to my sir? students. So you need to turn to Jesus Christ to so set you free from your sin. Listen here, son. All right. I'm as gay as the day is long and twice as sunny. I don't give a what you think Jesus tells me and what I should and should not be doing. Do you believe God wrote this film? <laughs> wow. God ordains everything. It is frightening to think that in a country where Christmas and Easter are national holidays, it is now considered offensive to be a Christian in public life. <coughs> Declaring your Christian faith publicly appears, ironically, to be the modern day equivalent of blasphemy. Turning our faces away. Because he couldn't continue to look. You said something very critical there. People turn their eyes away yeah. when they see it. And what they're seeing is their own sin. And it is not wanting to deal at times with their own sin. It is that hard to look at. But this film forces you to see yourself not the way you want to see yourself, but the way God sees you. His life is flowing through my veins.